Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is AP Chemistry. This is the 2018 AP Free Response Exam, problem number two. And uh, make sure you do it first and then take a look at this video for scoring guidelines and any kind of help that you might need on it. So let's uh, get to it. The You can see that this problem starts off with two moles of nitrogen monoxide and it reacts with one mole of the oxygen gas and makes two moles of the NO2. And you can see they gave some particle diagrams below and they gave you the products here. And so you can see we have one mole of the N NO2, one mole of the NO2, one mole of the NO2, one mole of the NO2. So we actually made four moles of this NO2. So think about your molar ratios. In order to make four moles of the NO2, we need four moles of the NO and we need two moles of the oxygen gas. And so that is what I need to draw. I need four moles of my NO. Now keep in mind the N is gonna be a solid. The O is gonna be a open. So I need four moles of that. So I need one, two, three, four. So I need four moles of that NO. I need two moles of the oxygen gas. So two moles of oxygen gas look like that. Remember it's double bonded. Now keep in mind, what did I have left over? I had one, two, three, four of these guys left over. So I need these four NOs that are still left over at the end. And so you can see in total I need eight molecules of the NO, eight molecules of the NO, four that reacted and four left over, and I need two molecules of the oxygen gas. And so you can see that is going to be worth two points. Uh, one point for correctly representing the molecules NO and O2 and one point earned for correctly representing atom conservation. So you can have uh, one point for uh, representing the NO, the four moles of NO and the two moles of O2. One point for atom conservation which means those four left over. So two points for A right there. And then we start going to a thermo slash equilibrium problem. You can see they gave us the delta H which is exothermic. They gave us the delta S which is negative or um, less entropy. Okay, And they gave us the delta G which is positive which means it is not favorable, not thermodynamically favorable. So they take a look at B1. B1 is asking calculate the, vol the equilibrium constant K. We have an equation and I'm going to do it down here is for E1. We have an equation of delta G equals negative RT natural log of K. We know our delta G is 0.87 or I need to change that into joules here. So that's going to be 870 joules per mole. Watch out for units on this. Negative R, we're going to use the R of the 8.31. Why are we going to use the 8.314? Because that's joules per mole Kelvin. That's going to help our units. Our temperature, you can see, is 298 Kelvin. So we have 298. Natural log of K. And so I got a little bit of algebra going on here. We have the 870. We're going to divide by the negative of the 8.314. We're going to divide by the 298. And that gives us the negative 0.351 equals the natural log of K. Now keep in mind back to our math class is what's the uh, algebra of natural log is E, right? E to the. So we're going to do E to that answer and I end up getting a K value of 0 0.70, okay? That is going to be worth one point. I know a lot of work for one point, but that K is gonna be worth one point for 0 0.70. Now they say if both the pressure of NO and the pressure of NO2 are initially at one, will the N2O3 be equal to one or less than one? So we have a little bit of an ice problem going on here, don't we? Okay. So I'm running out of some room, but I'm going to do it over here. So NO plus NO2 
is in equilibrium with N2O3. We start off with one atmosphere. We start off with one atmosphere. We start off with zero. Okay. Now look at the K. The K is less than one, which means the K is not going to move. If it was greater than one, the products would be favored. So I know the reactants are going to be favored here. The reactants are going to be favored. We can also take a look at the delta G. It's not a favorable reaction, so it's not going to push forward to the, the products, which means that the N2O3 is going to be less than 1.0 atmospheres. It's going to be less than 1.0 atmospheres. And so you, you get kind of one point for this E2 for a correct justification that the K indicates that a substantial amount of reactants will be present at the equilibrium. And so you have to kind of discuss that the reactants are favored. If you discuss that the reactants are favored, which means that it's not going to equal the 1.0, you get that other point. Okay. Um, then we go to C. C it says a student hypothesizes that an increase in temperature will increase the amount of N2O3 indicate whether you agree or disagree. Now, what do we know is if the delta H is positive, it's endothermic, think about back to Le Chatelier's, and the temperature is increased, it's going to shift it to the products or the N2O3 would increase. Okay? But take a look at the delta H. The delta H is a negative value. It's exothermic. So I would disagree with this statement that um, as we disagree with this statement, on the account of Le Chatelier's principle is that when the delta H is negative and the temperatures increase, it's going to shift it towards the reactants, which means uh, the N2O3 will not increase in its amount. And that is worth one point for the disagreement as well as the justification. Make sure you write that you disagree. Okay. Let's move on. We're moving on to D and we move on to kind of a, um, a problem that deals with a Lewis dot structure. A Lewis electron dot diagram. We have uh, HNO2. Uh, they give us the H, the O, the N, the O. They gave us. Now keep in mind they're not lying to you. This is a correct um, layout of it. We know that this hydrogen only gets a single bond, and we know that oxygen normally gets a single bond and has two unsure pairs, which gives it a bent type shape. Now the N still needs his octet as well as the oxygen needs an octet. The nitrogen has five valence electrons, which means it will double bond here, and that gives everyone an octet. And that Lewis dot structure is worth obviously one point for that correct Lewis dot structure. You can use dots or dashes to represent electron pairs. We want to know the hybridization of the nitrogen atom. So you take a look at the nitrogen atom. How many bonding sites do we have? We have one, two, three bonding sites. If you have three bonding sites, keep in mind what that hybridization will be. It will be an sp2 hybridized. Because the unshared pairs, we do call that bent but you just get one point for talking about the sp2 hybridization of that molecule. Okay. So then we move into a um, titration. And so a titration slash equilibrium type problem. And so we have a lot of really good parts of this problem. It spans a lot of AP chemistry and that's why I do like this problem. And so in this titration curve, you can see we have the HNO2, that's a weak acid. That weak acid gives away the H plus and makes that OH minus become water and the NO2 minus the conjugate base. And so we want to determine the initial concentration of the HNO2. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use our M1V1 equals M2V2. We can use the M1V1 equals M2V2 because we have a one-to-one -one ratio in everything. Remember, if it's not a one-to-one -to -one ratio, you have to do that molar ratio in the in-between part. We want to know the initial concentration of the M1. They told us that we have um, a 100 mil sample. 100 mil sample. 
so we have 100 milliliters. Okay, we know the KOH is 0.1 molar, and we know the volume we used to get to the titration point was 20. And so we take 0.1 times 20 divided by 100, and we get a molarity of the HNO2 of 0 0.020 molar HNO2. Okay. Uh, E, that is worth one point. One point. Okay. Now you take a look at the E2. It says estimate the value of the pKa. How do we know what the pKa is? Well, halfway to the equivalence point, the pH is equal to the pKa. That is when we are buffered. So if you take a look at this and you estimate it, um, I estimate it about 3.4. You might estimate it a different value. That's okay. That's all worth one point as long as you're close to that 1.4. Okay. And then the last part of the problem says this. F says during the titration after about 15 milliliters. So right here. So 15 milliliters. So what do we know about 15 milliliters? Before the titration the HNO2 is going to be in excess. After that halfway to the equivalence point of the titration, the NO2 minus the conjugate base is going to be in excess. And so we know because the pH is greater than the pKa, the conjugate base or the NO2 minus is going to be at a greater amount. Okay, And so that is worth one point for indicating the NO2 minus as well as the justification. And so let's uh, kind of review all of our points here. We always do that at the end. Uh, A was worth two points. B was worth, B1 was worth one point. B2 was worth one point. C was worth uh, one point as well for the disagreement and the justification. D1 was worth one point. D2 is worth one point. E1 is worth one point. E2 is worth one point. And F is worth one point of a 10 point problem. Make sure you go to MrRaden.com, make sure you put in your score for me, and I hope this problem uh, was pretty fun for you, okay? I'll catch you on the next video. See you guys.